Hey people, how's it going? Before we start, can you please just like and subscribe? Um, really appreciate the support, thank you very much. So today we're going to be focusing on pedals that you could have on your pedal board if you're wanting to play blues or blues rock. Um, the difference between the two and the, the types of pedals you might choose to use is that blues, um, if it's following just traditional 12 bar formats, your Freddie BB Albert King style blues, um, we have a lot less gain, so you would tone the pedals down a lot. And you might not use some of the other effects, um, which I'll show you today. It, um, in comparison to blues rock, which would have a lot more gain um, and a lot more effects overall. But in summary, I would say that the pedal board is fairly basic in comparison to um, people who play more prog rock or psychedelic rock, they definitely have a lot more stuff going on on their pedal board. So let's get into it. Whether it's blues or blues rock, the first thing you would probably want to consider is some kind of overdrive. There's many different overdrives that you can choose from, but the majority of blues rock players aren't playing with huge amounts of distortion. Um, if they were like 60s or 70s blues rock players, they were more playing with an overdrive. Um, the heaviest types of distortion started coming in in the late 70s, early 80s, but mostly early 80s. So we got the Tube Screamer, obviously a classic. Gives you that tubey kind of sound. A lot of people use it. Um, I think everyone should at least experience what a Tube Screamer does to their tone. Um, we've got the Blues Driver from Boss. These are really cheap, just underrated style pedals. Very much like the Tube Screamer. This is an expensive one here. But um, you can get the Tube Screamer Mini, which kind of does the same thing. Not as much, but within that realm. And it does a great job, you know. The Blues Driver, very inexpensive pedal. One of the Boss standards. Um, everyone's played one at least once or twice in their life. Um, it has more gain than you'd expect for an overdrive. Um, in comparison to the Tube Screamer, the gain is like five, three, three, four, five times the amount of the Tube Screamer. Um, I'll show you this one as well. This one's a Sweet Cream by Tone City. This little pedal's very cheap very cheap um i got this for a hundred dollars australian i sold a few other pedals and just bought this one instead and which is probably around about 70 or 60 us dollars this is by far the most incredible blues tone i've heard in a while um, it gives you that 60s blues um, a lot of people have basically compared it to early clapton early peter green stuff um Incredible pedal, incredible overdrive. Doesn't get much gain. The Blues Driver definitely has a lot of gain. And if you roll the Blues Driver back on the gain, you can kind of, not close, but get, get within region of this tone. But yeah, those are the overdrives that I think are pretty standard when it comes to Blues. If you've got a good amp, you know, chuck a tube screamer on the top and you're pretty sweet, same with Blues Driver. The good thing is, any of the overdrives I just showed you, any of these, will sound good with the majority of amps. Even if it's a fairly cheap solid state amp, on the clean channel you can run these overdrives through and it'll still sound pretty good. Like, it won't be as good as a higher quality amp, but, you know, someone hearing you play and if you're playing well, it's going to be alright, okay? so. Next, you would probably want to consider some kind of fuzz. Now, when it comes to blues, uh, the fuzz that you hear is more for the blues rock. Um, it definitely came in in the 60s with all of the English artists kind of using that fuzz, like Clapton and Hendrix and Keith Richards and all of them, uh, Jimmy Page as well. But there were a few blues players in the 60s who wanted to use the same equipment that the more modern guitarists were using. So you had Muddy Waters. Um, he, he created an album called Electric Mud. 
and he used a lot of fuzz on that album. You can hear the fuzz all the way throughout. I think there may have been a few octave ups or wah wahs going on. So, uh, Hal and Wolf also, I think it was Hal and Wolf's electric album where he used some of the same equipment that the new guys were using. So, when when those traditional blues players stepped into the realm of you know contemporary blues rock players all of a sudden they're putting a lot of fuzz because that's what those blues rock players were doing when it comes to fuzz there's a whole range of different fuzz that you can use um here are a few of my suggestions the old fuzz face just a classic pedal hendrix used one don't get it twisted though hendrix's fuzz face was modified but <clears throat> It's a great fuzz pedal. Um, it's got a bit more latency than something like the Big Muff. I've just got the, the Big Muff Nano, just because I want it to fit on my pedal board. And some people say there's a tonal difference between the, the original Big Muff and the Big Muff Nano. But to be honest, for the size difference, I don't even care. The, the Big Muff Nano does a great job. Um, it has a bit more bit a little bit more attack than the fuzz face the fuzz face it takes a little bit longer for that signal to transmit um, both have a similar type of fuzz structure but for the most part that there is some tonal differences but nothing too crazy um, you might want to go for the big muff uh, russian reissue these are pretty cool these are cheap as well um, when it comes to the price of these two pedals, every guitarist knows how cheap they are. I picked up the Big Muff for under 200 Australian. I picked up the Big Muff Nano online for like 120 Australian dollars, which is probably like 90 US or 80 US, I don't know, somewhere around there. So you can pick them up for pretty cheap and you get a pretty good deal. I've also got this one a little bit more niche. It's a full tone Octafuzz. Now, as you can see at the top there, it has the octave and the fuzz option there. Um, I, I've found myself really liking just the fuzz channel on that. Um, a friend of mine ran it through his um, Fender, one of his old Fender reissue amps. And man, it just sounded like the best thing I've ever heard. Um, so all those fuzz pedals are great. Now, my opinions on fuzzes and the overdrives are... Um, rarely do I move into the realms of boutique pedals where someone's kind of making them in their home. Um, I know that you can get some good boutique pedals and this is a typical example. It's just a random pedal company. Um, they're not super big and super popular in comparison to electro harmonics, but you know, they have made arguably my favorite pedal. Um, but I have had a bunch of fuzz pedals made by boutique companies which just haven't quite hit the nail on their head. They're a little bit fizzy, the, the signal's not as strong and um, they kind of get a bit muddy as well. And, you know, certain riffs just in, the, in that world just won't work if it's fizzy and muddy and it's not very clear um, what's, be, what's being played while... You know, the old classics, they always come through. They're always tried and true. I recommend really doing your research with boutique pedals um, because they can be expensive uh, because, you know, someone has handmade them and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, the cheap kind of ones that you start off with, like, they're tried and true for a reason. You know, a lot of people kind of badmouth some of these more cliched pedals. But if you get the right combinations going, you can get a really good tone. I know that a lot of people are trying to get unique tones. Like, I totally understand that. But if you're wanting a fuzz, like, I just recommend going for something tried and true, going for something cheap. Um, just, to, just to start you off, like, spending, for me to spend $120 on a Big Muff Nano is really not breaking the bank and I know that it's always going to be a great go-to pedal um, however if I had spent 200 300 400 dollars on some boutique 
fuzz pedal that didn't really hit the nail on the head. Um, I kind of be stuck with trying to sell that and it can be difficult at times. So that's my opinions on fuzzes and overdrives. Um, they're both necessary for the blues. Obviously the fuzz, if you're wanting to really beef it up. Overdrive, if you're just wanting that smooth kind of blues tone. And in blues, there's not really a huge amount of distortion. That's more left for rock or heavier styles of music. So I'm not going to talk about any distortion pedals right now. I do think distortion has a place in the blues, but it tends to be a bit more for that heavier rock and hard rock and heavy metal style music. So I won't get into that. Now, what I think every blues player should have is an old school Wawa. There we go. I've got the Dunlop, just the standard Dunlop original. Does its job, tried and true, cheap enough. And a mate of mine has the, the Mini Wawa, the Dunlop Mini Wawa. Basically does the same thing. He says it has a bit more sweep. Um, I haven't tried it out yet. I'd have to give it a go. But you can't go wrong. Um, I would also recommend the Vox Wah. I have seen um, reviews and it definitely does have more sweep than the standard Dunlop Wah. There we go. Now with the Wah Wahs, I think you have to be careful. Mine has no knobs on the side at all. It does one thing and one thing really well. When I was trying out Wahs, I tried out a range of different Wahs. There was a Jimi Hendrix signature Wah. There was a dime bag signature wah, um, and they had all these like there were some other versions of this Dunlop wah where it had like built-in fuzz or built-in boosts and distortion and stuff. Um, I think all of that really takes away just from the simple purpose of a wah. I know you can fiddle around with it, and if you like doing that, do so. But if I get a wah and it has all these different settings, I'm just going to be lost within the whole thing, you know? I need it to be simple, and all I want to do is put some wah over the top of my, just, you know, overdrive, or even a fuzz, maybe. So, you know, I don't recommend buying any of the wahs with these over-the-top uh, setups, and you have to go through and edit all these different things. It's a little bit too much. It can get you a particular sound, but look, you end up you end up paying a lot more money just for a few different settings, which if you've got the pedals, you don't need those extra settings. If I've got a wah going through my uh, sweet cream right here, and I'm wanting it to chuck a bit more gain over the top, I just throw on the blues driver as a little boost. It's as simple as that. Throw on a fuzz as a little boost. It's just simple, you know? Um, all of this extra stuff, it can just make it unnecessarily expensive. And you have all these gadgets, but what I've learned is that the people with the best sounds learn how to use what they got to the best of its ability. And that, it's just as simple as that. All of this extra stuff, you know, we all know a guitarist with some Marshall JCM stack and some, you know, reissue five grand Les Paul who can barely play. You know, they've got 10 grand of equipment right in front of them, yet they can barely use it. And that's why I reckon that you can get really creative with all of these pedals and you don't need to have overly expensive gear to make them sound exceptional. You just need to know how to use them and the good people know how to use them. So on top of that, um, I think it's, I think those are the basics for blues. I think it is cool to have a delay floating around. I've got the Strymon El Capistan. It's, it's a good delay. It does everything you need. Um, for me, pardon me. Oh, I just had breakfast. For me, it's a little bit of overkill. There's like so many different settings and as you can see up the top there, those switches, there's three different um, things per switch and you know they can all, the combinations are just so extensive. Um, you know, nothing beats the the Boss, the DS, oh no, sorry, those white delays, I forget the name of them. 
they're simple, they do the job, they sound great. There's no real problems with them. So look, I spent a bit too much money on that El Capistan. Um, a friend recommended it to me. I thought it was would be cool and it is great, but I'm just kind of doing basic stuff with it. I'm not using all the functions because I don't want to. So look, I recommend just finding one of those cheap boss delays and just sticking with that. I mean, I know a lot of pro players use it. I saw Adam Jones from um, Tool. I saw his um, rig rundown and he had a bunch of them on his board and it's just simple, you know, so that's pretty easy. And with the delays, it just gives you a little bit of an option to create some some different atmospheric sounds. Um, you can really, you know, do a screaming solo with it. You can play some quieter chords and just have them ring out a bit more. So I wouldn't take up too much of your pedal board space with a delay. It's an option, but that's about it. Now, when it comes to just a moment, what is it? Oh, yeah. So I was checking my amp. When it comes to any other pedals, those are like kind of the standard four that you might, categories, four categories that you might see on a board. Uh, when it comes to any other pedals, my recommendation is choosing something that will kind of change the tone, change the sound a little bit. You might, if your amp doesn't have reverb, you might consider putting reverb I mean, a basic reverb pedal into your board, uh, that can work. You know, blues has a lot of reverb, especially more traditional blues. So usually if you're playing traditional blues, you'll have reverb on the amp. But if you don't, you know, chucking a reverb pedal on there. You might consider chucking like a Univibe pedal. Hendrix was really big on the Univibes. Um, you might consider chucking a flange, maybe, if that's your thing. On my um, Blues Cube amp right here, I'll just show you. Probably can't even see it, but it doesn't matter. Who cares? I've actually got a tremolo function on there, so I don't I don't have any of those pedals with me on on my board because I've got the tremolo function right there, and if I need to put it on for that for that kind of Jimmy Vaughan kind of um, tremolo sound. I just switch it on and I kind of use that throughout the song and um but that's about it for like that fifth pedal you might just want to go with something that changes the sound up completely and, and gives you more room for um different forms of songwriting that that might not sound interesting with a clean tone but might sound super interesting with a uni vibe on it or something like that um I probably am in the works I probably probably will buy Univibe at least sometime in the maybe distant future or so. Maybe an MXR Univibe. I think they're pretty cool. Or I might try and find a cheaper one on Reverb somewhere. But for the most part, the pedals I have are pretty simple, basic pedals. There's nothing too over the top about them. And ultimately, how you use them is really how you get your get your tone. For example, you might chuck two of these pedals together and see what you get. Who knows what you might what you might find if you chuck them together. Anyway, that's that video. I hope it helps you out. My kind of finishing thoughts are um, when you're starting off, don't be spending too much money on this stuff. A uh, good pedal board, four to five hundred bucks, and that's it. And then you work with that, and then you add to it over time. Um, but don't think that you need to start just going all out, and that one pedal that you might buy is going to save your whole music career or anything. You know, it's going to give you the tone that gets you noticed or anything. Um, I can probably pretty much well say that. When it comes to, to guitar tones and pedals, most of them have been found and played already. Yeah, there's some there's some different kind of tones coming out with the, the plug-in DI kind of world, but look, stick to the basics, learn how to use them really well, and don't get caught up in the hype of boutique pedals and spending too much money on a guitar pedal, okay? Get yourself a good guitar, get yourself a good amp, get yourself some nice 
standard type pedals and make sure you're playing well and make sure you're writing good songs. Anyway, like and subscribe, please. Um, see you on the next video. Don't be late.